okay, let's 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 start talking about disasters then. Mm. <laughs> um, so, all right, I'm gonna start. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Well, There's Your Problem, which is a podcast with slides about engineering disasters. Uh, I'm Justin Rosniak. I, I'm do not eat on the YouTubes. Um, and you know, I do this series as well as a series on urban planning and history. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, uh, who, who's next? Uh, I guess I'll go. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Liam Anderson. Uh, I am old man Anderson on Twitter now, uh, with, with the zero in there. Um, I, uh, basically am just a dick in do not eats mentions. Uh, and I call people me names and wait for Twitter to ban me instead of the Nazis. <laughs> uh, me next. Um, Alice Caldwell Kelly, Alice Avazandam on Twitter. Uh, I also do a podcast called Trash Future, and if we're doing pronouns, she and I cannot stress this enough, her. And we have a special guest today. Hi, special guest. Yes. Hi. Uh, my name is Hi, Kate. Kate Wagner. I am the creator of McMansion Hell. My Twitter is at McMansion Hell. And I'm here because this is uh, my favorite engineering disaster. Uh, that's a weird thing to say, but I think it's, I think it's quite neat. Mm. It's a good favorite to have. I think so. I mean, it's so, it's so dark. Uh, mm. <laughs> there's just so many things. The, 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 we'll, we'll get into it. We'll get into it. So... Yes, today's disaster is the Kansas City Hyatt Regency walkway collapse. Um, uh, okay, so this was a big hotel, right? Uh, as you can see, the hotel is still there. Um, yeah, it's the tallest building in Missouri when they finished it in 1980. You know, this big-ass hotel for their convention center. Uh, There's a rotating restaurant on top because, you know, of course there was. <laughs> it's very aesthetic. I like that. Just a yes. big flat burger on top. Just of it. slammed yeah. out on top of this building. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, yeah. It was built in I think the early or the late nineteen seventies. So yeah, the the Sky Restaurant was in full swing. Just just bringing in pounds and pounds of hideous carpeting. And yeah. Just... <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, with those bad 1970s swirly designs. Uh -huh, and oh like lamps yeah. And just, yeah, that's that shit. Generally... That's that shit I want. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I, you can see in the second picture, you know, a very nice 1970s sort of modern lobby. Except there's some stuff on the floor <laughs> that shouldn't be there. Oh my god, that's one way of putting it. <laughs> that's not gone well. So I thought I'd start by sort of introducing people to how a building gets put up. You can see I have a man in a hard hat here to emphasize this with, with, with watermarks on it because for artistic reasons. <laughs> you could tell he's a supervisor because yeah. he's wearing a hard hat, but he's also wearing a suit and tie. Yes. <laughs> That's how you know. Also, the hard hat is very clean. This was every slide in engineering school. <laughs> oh my god! Thanks, Drexel. Just no text, yeah. just the image. When I was in yeah. school, yeah. When I was in school for acoustics, like also true. Acoustics is like sometimes engineering. It's mostly failure. Speaking of failure, here's here's how a building gets put up, right? So the first guy we have is the client. The client's the guy with the money. So the client says, "Look, I got some money. I want a building, and here's what I want." And then they tell their concept to the architect, right? Who's the next guy in line or girl or non-binary pal, whatever. Uh, so anyway, so maybe it gives the architect some sketches or some vague plans of what they want, you know, something like that. So the architect then takes a look at what the client was describing and says, oh, crap, that, that's the wrong. It's part. terrific work. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So. The architect says, uh, he looks at the plans that the client gives them, or, or the, the concept, and he says, what the hell? What are you thinking? Right, and then he has to go about turning the vague ideas of this real estate guy into a workable building. And, you know, there's some back and forth here, right? You forgot about the architect and his, like, immense ego. And I say his because it's usually his. Mm, unless it's Zaha Hadid. It's and like... weird fascist opinions. Well, Zaha's dead, and now is and now Zaha Hadid is also run by a man, so... Mm. 
F. Wow. I mean, <laughs> yeah, press F to pay respects. Also, I just speaking of gender, I realized I forgot to give my pronouns, which are she, her. I also forgot to give mine, which are he, him. So I'm sorry, we blew we're doing that. it. Yeah, we were just about to say. <laughs> two pronoun checks. Yeah, we, I, I want to make the gamers mad here. Yes, I want the YouTube comments to be real salty again, so I can tell people <laughs> to fucking cry about it. <laughs> Which was a great source of joy for me. Yeah, we, we my... just wrap this up and do a separate pronoun check for every minute of the video. I, I'm in favor <laughs> of this if it will piss off the, the mad gamers in the engineering disasters videos. If that's the fucking thing you get upset about, go <laughs> offline, go fucking hug a tree or something, get the fuck out of my podcast, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Dude, why would you put trees in danger for, like that? The trees won't be harmed if the Lorax is harmed. But also, I, I do agree. I agree that I agree that engineers should commune with nature more. Yes. <laughs> yes. So. So the architect is is doing is doing ego things. He's like, well, what if we had a? Uh, not only do we have like a rotating restaurant, but it's also like in the form of an amorphous blob, and we use a lot of big words stolen from philosophy, but like not really connected to describe what that means. And then, uh, anyways, that gets valued engineered uh, down, and now we've arrived to the third step. So yeah, we're at the third step where the architect sends the drawings to the engineer or the several engineers, right? There's a bunch of subdisciplines. There's a structures guy, a foundation guy, a uh, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning guy. There's a plumbing guy, an electrical guy. You know, there's like half a dozen different engineers who have to get their hands on these plants to make the building work, right? Yeah, and they all love each other. Uh, they work very well. Yeah, especially the acoustical uh, yeah. engineer and the HVAC engineer. Like, those guys love each other for sure. And by that, I mean that's not true. These guys all look at the architect's drawings and say, what the fuck? Uh, <laughs> yeah, gonna, pretty much. We're going to have to mark this Nazi yeah. for work. <laughs> how, how am I supposed to route, uh, like, cooling ducts through this weird, curvy, like, sinewy thing that you've done? <laughs> so the, the engineer goes back to the architect's like, you realize you need sprinklers, right? <laughs> they ruined the lines of my building. Someone fires the acoustical engineer for being too expensive, and that's why mm. hotels are all terrible. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> you, you know it's not up, actually up to code to have the hallways be like a Junji Ito uh, a fault line thing where you just fit the person into them with no space? <laughs> Oh my god. This is my hole. It was made for me. <laughs> <laughs> it was made for me and then it went through a series of revisions before being stamped. And... It's, it's just the hole. It's supposed to be made for you, but it's like a Lego guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, you know, there's some more back and forth here between the various engineers, the architect and the client. You know, the H, you know, the structure guy has a complaint to the HVAC guy who wants to cut a hole in an I-beam to run a duct through. You know, the plumbing conflicts with each other, blah, blah, blah. And... Eventually, you know, the engineers sign off on something. They put a stamp on it, right? Uh, this is the professional engineer stamp. It's very important. Uh, what it basically says is that these drawings are right, and if they're wrong, you can send me to jail. Nice. Oh, hell yeah. When you're licensed as a professional engineer, the state gives you a stamp, except in New Jersey where they give you a crimper. Um, <laughs> what is a crimper? It, it, like, makes a physical indentation in the paper. Huh. Okay. I... That, that's definitely official. Yeah, that sounds like New Jersey. Yes. So, these, these stamp drawings are sent out to the city for permitting, uh, and then inspectors, you know, code enforcement looks at it, and these folks a lot of times are not engineers. Uh, they're just sort of people who are there to look at it and say, hmm, well, there's a stamp on them and nothing looks obviously wrong. Mm. So... You know, that's, uh, depending on the jurisdiction, sometimes code enforcement and permitting is kind of, you know, lackadaisical. Uh, <laughs> Can't we cut some of this bureaucracy somehow? Uh, maybe we should just, just skip permitting yeah. entirely. Oh, yeah. Just knock yeah, a few buddy. steps out of it. Yeah. Dude, that's how McMansions are built. Hmm. I mean, like, residential, res residential building codes are, like, way more lax than, uh, basically every other kind of building code. I mean, single-family residential, not multi-family residential. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, you, you don't need architects or engineers on that at all. <laughs> and thus, Grove House. <laughs> Several McMansion Hell posts where they're just like balconies that are absolutely not to code in any way, shape, or form. Uh, and it's like, yeah, seems risky, but okay. The house I lived in uh, when I was a teenager, 
uh, was hilarious because it had a balcony that absolutely should not have been there, like off my bedroom. And you could feel like the carport move under you. And it was fucking delirious. I loved it. I love suburban building codes. <laughs> See, this is the thing. You don't get that kind of innovation and excitement when you have a strong regulatory thing. It's very boring uh, not having like the floor move under you. You'd be surprised how many architects have made this argument. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get rid of building codes. They're restricting my creativity. God. <laughs> well, a fun fact about building codes, though, before we go, is that I think oh, there's a, like a big criticism of building codes that comes from a fact that like a lot of building codes are are put together by experts that are really just like people from like you know like insulation companies and stuff who have a uh, vested interest. There's like lots of conflict of infl interests and how building mm. codes are uh, sort of come together. And uh, that's that's a that's a big criticism of yeah, them. The, the, your, your house has to be 60% insulation by weight. Just <laughs> cramming it into the under the stairs. Dude, that's, I wish that were my house, just because, you know, then my dog would embark at, like, everyone who, like, goes up the stairs. Grover House was actually a very wisely built building. Mm. It was uh, architectural that's freedom. Bold. I like that. That's uh, I like that. We're d now we're at the com uh, contractor. Yes. Yeah, so now we, we've sent we're sending the drawings to the contractor, right? From the engineer and the architects, and the contractors take a look at the drawings and they say, "Fucking hell, <laughs> these chuckle fucks, goddamn moron, idiot assholes." <laughs> that was you last night watching the World Series. I enjoyed that. Wait, who won the World <laughs> Series? Oh wait, it's still going. It's still going. It's game one. Who Nats won? won. Fuck the Nats. Dude, I'm in DC. I can't say that, or else police will come into my house and like shoot me and my dog. No, it'll be it'll be a defense department contractor. It'll be just some booze Allen Hamilton fuck. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, complaining that you're hurting his feelings as he's shooting your dog. Just a guy you know, in a lanyard. Yeah. Show, <laughs> just whacks you with then, the lanyard but then until tells you're dead. you how impressive yeah. it is that he has one as he's beating you to death. Yeah, exactly. Oh my god. So then the contractor sends some drawing out to their subcontractors, right? And the subcontractors say, What the fuck? Jesus Christ. They they make some modifications and, and they send back what are called shop drawings, which shows what they can build and what they intend to build. Right, because a lot of times uh, a problem with architects and engineers draw, uh, designing something is that sometimes, you know, the design is very nice, but it, can you actually build it? Mm. You know, manufacturability is a major concern. If you if you have a nice design, it doesn't matter if you can't actually build it. Anyway, so they send back shop drawings to the engineers and architects, and uh, they either sign off on it or they say, no, you dumb idiot, we have to do it this way. And then there's, you know, some back and forth here until someone, there's some consensus that we come to. After that, of course, we get to labor, and they're the people who are actually building the thing. And, you know, they they probably have the most experience with building stuff because they actually do build the stuff. And they complain about all the boneheaded decisions that were made in the previous uh, various parts. And they're the least able to make changes, of course, because, you know, they're just labor. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're, they're just hissing an, a girder with a hammer for 16 hours a day, like... Why would they know anything about girders? They just work with yeah, them exactly. they're, their they're, entire they're all, life. They're, they're just doing the socialist realist <laughs> art style thing where you're just hitting the thing with the other thing until a building happens. Is that not how that works? Yes. <laughs> it's just... A bunch of guys going with hammers yeah, and there's it's... a big cloud of smoke <laughs> and then and then they leave and the building's there. Yeah, this is this is how building works. It definitely It's like doesn't... in cartoons. Yeah. You definitely don't end up with like one eye beam with a bunch of hammer dents in it just sitting in the dirt. <laughs> That's how you know it's tough, Alice. Mm, that's true. There's like a, a child like walking over the I beams as the crane swings it around, you know? <laughs> it's all just it's all just Looney Tunes. Like every construction site is actually just like uh one extended wily e. coyote gag. Hmm. That's not how it happens. It's a it's it's a load bearing painted on hull. <laughs> so then the building gets built, and then the architects and engineers come back and they do the as-built drawings to show what they actually built versus what the plans said. Um, and keep in mind, it, 
everyone's been meddling in this at every stage of the process, especially the client who's, you know, probably coming in and saying, well, I don't understand why we couldn't have a floating orb of lava. Like <laughs> that was my vision right there. You in know? my rotating restaurant. Mm -hmm. Yes. You just cook the food on it. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you know what's fancy when you have to cook your own damn food. Mm. It's like a fondue. You just like have a long fork and you like <laughs> hold the food out towards the orb of lava. <laughs> Why can't we just have a giant fire pit inside? It's yeah. it's cozy. It's fall, y'all. <laughs> what 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 do you mean? I need ventilation over my fire pit. Carbon monoxide? What's that? That would conflict with my vision. <laughs> it's not going to be lethal smoke inhalation nine times out of ten. <laughs> Statistically, everything is fine. Oh my god. The, the lesson here is that it's a goddamn miracle anything gets built at all. That's true. And if it's government contracting, like if the client's the government, <laughs> everything's ten times worse. Oh, yeah. Dude, my dad used to be a, uh, he used to do inventory for uh, medical equipment for army hospitals. Like, that was his job. Like, truly, like, a boring government job in, like, every way, shape, or form. But he would, like, have all these stories about, like, how, like, screws and stuff would be, like, nine dollars. Uh... And, uh, like, basically, like, every, everyone just, like, price gouges the government, and it turned him into a libertarian. Mm. Oh, yeah, <laughs> the, the $700 shower curtain kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Place. $500 hammer. Mm -hmm. It's the best hammer, so I don't That's know what right. you're upset about. That better be a good hammer. It was not a good hammer. The, the West Wing did a, a, a scene trying to rebut this, where, like, I think... It might even have been Christian Slater or something playing some what? Navy Admiral. <laughs> it was like the reason why we need this seven thousand dollar ashtray is because he like hits it with a with a hammer or something or a paperweight, and it like fractures cleanly into two pieces, and it's like so it doesn't blind everybody when it gets shattered. It was a really weird. The West Wing was a weird show, and I that's... never watched it, and I'm like truly blessed. Yeah, you are, and it's it's like that's it's it's a weird choice to have infiltrated the brains of like all of these lanyard guys who are coming to shoot Kate's dog. Um, <laughs> he's sitting right next to me, and he's like, "Oh, I want to bark so badly." So here's what the lobby of the Hyatt Regency, which is what we're talking about, which I think looked like sick. when it was finished. Mm. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Very, I like um, it a lot. Who's the Finnish dude who does all the circles? Too many vowels in his name. Saarinen. Well, Stephen Hall is like the guy now who does the the circles. Al, are you thinking of? Are you thinking of? Oh, there's like two famous Finnish dudes. There's like Alvar Alto and Eero Saarinen. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm thinking of a, like a a composite Finnish dude with a lot of vowels. So yeah, I I think it, I think it's Saarinen, but whatever. I think I mean that that's that circle reminds me of Louis Kahn, who uh, who did the that that one library. Uh, that I'm forgetting the name of. God, I'm so bad. Okay. Exeter. Exeter Library. Exeter Library. Thank you. Okay. I, I was also going to say Lou Kahn. Uh, Who was the architect for this? I'm going to Google it right now. I actually don't know. I thought it was just some generic architecture firm, but they weren't the ones at fault, so like no one remembers them. So focus on these two walkways up here. Or, there's one up here. There's one down here. The one in the middle, which is most visible, doesn't matter. Mm. They br they branded these skywalks, right? Um, and I yes, I, I feel like we can kind of close the oh, file on was, this right it now. Was, it was Edward Larrabee Barnes, who was an important. Uh, he was an important uh, modern, late modern uh, corporate architect. Hmm. But we can. I, I I feel like we can close the file on this because clearly we have a clear cause here, and it's. Um, man's hubris towards god because walking in the sky is what god does yep. and this is like the tower of babel and as such you know that man is being viciously punished for his hubris with uh, torment and calamity this is truly <laughs> like the this is truly like the the uh this the lesson of like late modern architecture in general i think yeah it's, it, it it is do, do not try and usurp god with your fancy skywalks uh <laughs> <laughs> because that way, only ruin uh, awaits you. God is here to make your buildings leak. <laughs> yeah. 
that that was something that uh, back when I worked at an engineering firm, one of my coworkers was like, you know, you, you really want to impress me as if you're an architect, design a building that doesn't leak. <laughs> they can't do it. I, 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 can't thought, do it. I thought can't you were doing. Done. I thought you were doing the religious thing still and being like, you want to impress me, build a building that will reach to heaven itself and unite <laughs> every spoken language. They also can't do that. No, that's true. <laughs> but, if, but if they did, it would leak. Yes, absolutely, without a doubt. Undoubtedly. Yes. So these skywalks up here, which are an affront to God, <laughs> um, are suspended by tie rods, right? They come down from the ceiling, and then they meet, uh, and then they are fastened into a pair of sea channels, and then a second tie rod extends to the lower one, right? Okay. So there's a reason for this, which was bad. All right, so here's a diagram of that actual assembly. You can see there's P. P is the load, right? Dude, so loads on D's nuts. <laughs> yeah, you, you pee on the nut. Yeah, yeah, P, yeah. P is stored, P in, the is stored in the balls. Oh, oh. Too slow with that. P, P is stored in the nuts. Uh -huh. Oh, in this case. Christ. Yes. So... This is the shop drawing phase of the process, right? The original design was by Jack D. Gilliam and Associates, their engineers, right? And the idea is the, the, the beams that are holding up the skywalk are made of two C channels, right? Which are welded together. Okay. And the original idea was to have the weld on the sides, but that got moved to the top. I'm not sure why. Um, and then the tie rods, which are going to hold the bridge up, uh, we're going to be continuous through the pair of C channels uh, from this would be the fourth floor walkway and then they'd go all the way down to the second floor walkway, right? Yeah. So you just have one long rod, right? Yes. Now, as this was designed, this would actually only be able to support 60% of the weight that was required by the code. But this was a preliminary sketch at this point. No one had done any math on it, right? And they send this preliminary sketch to their contractor, Haven Steel. And Haven Steel takes one look at it and says, These chuckle fucks. <laughs> you morons. Because in order to get this nut up the tie rod, you would need to screw it on a continuously threaded rod up two stories <laughs> to get to where it needed to be. Right? This is one guy climbing a ladder with a wrench. Yeah. Because they said, look, uh... You, you, we shouldn't do it this way. This is stupid. We should have, you know, we should se separate into two rods, right? So we don't have to thread so much of it. We can get this built more quickly or less chance of damaging the tie rod uh, threading when they're putting up the other bridge. Because, you know, you might, you might wind up in a situation where you can't screw the nut all the way up the tie rod because you screwed up some threading on this continuous... 40 foot threaded rod <laughs> just the inanimate carbon rod we love it yes the thing is the new design they came up with and this was so what they sent over was like a sketch on like a piece of paper and what they got back was also a sketch on a piece of paper neither of these were supposed to be final designs the um the new design resulted in the rod the the, the load from the rod. The, the load from the rod, yeah, but... which is P, right, goes into the pair of C channels, right, and then it has to, you know, go around, and then instead of this one nut uh, supporting the weight of just the one skywalk, it's now supporting the weight of two skywalks. Oh. So before, it has, you know, 60% of the strength required by the code. Now it has 30% of the strength that's required by the code. That doesn't seem ideal. And the, no. <laughs> beyond that, of course, because they move the weld from the sides to the top, the hole which this rod is going through goes directly through the weld, and all this weight is applied directly at the weld, which is the <laughs> weakest part of this particular and, cross section. And we right? still don't know why they moved the weld to the top. It could have been anything. It could have been the aesthetic. I, I, I would suspect that was probably it, because I think these sides were... You, you don't want to have, like, bare welds, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Part of the story is that uh, design changes, or 
perhaps not these, but at least some design changes were just straight up confirmed over the phone with nobody checking documentations or like calculations or anything like that. So that's fantastic. I mean, given how difficult it is to organize a podcast with a slideshow over the phone, and we have a visual, like we have a visual element to refer to, doing this with just audio and but like there's actual maths involved and you know you have to actually build the thing that's impossible yeah i mean it's it you, you, i i don't know when i when i worked at an engineering firm there was a very strong emphasis in doing things over the phone and i was always like why don't we send an email so we can refer back to what we said mm. but no nah, we got to do everything over the phone i i, I never understood it <laughs> this design is accepted which they never did math on the preliminary design, and then they finalized the design based on something they never really looked at, and they build the damn thing. Nice. Yeah. This is Friday, July 17th, 1981. There's a tea dance, a, a right? What? A tea dance. 1940-style tea dancing competition. Hell yeah, buddy. I don't buddy. know what any of that is. Uh, it sounds I, awful. Like, even before it, the it, whole, you know, disaster part. I, I mean, yeah, I mean, presumably the disaster was that the dance existed yeah. in the first place. Yeah, this is why you should never dance. Mm-hmm. It's true. But also, like, I mean, tea dancing, I don't know what it is, but it sounds like some Reagan era bullshit to me. Yeah. No, that I'm further, probably offending people. Back, I'm sorry, maybe tea, da- tea dancing is a legitimate form of art that's uh, well known to these here reviewers. But I don't think that the, the dance, the aesthetic qualities of the dance are what's important here. No, but I, I'm saying it, it sets the scene. If it's already yeah. like a, a, a Tartarus in there before the thing like fails, then you know how. Then much you're gonna have a bunch of people it? moving all over the place, like yeah. sending all of their like Correct. lovely vibrations <laughs> through this particularly vulnerable uh, yeah. vibe check. System. Yeah, yeah, vibe check. Dude, I'm just gonna refer to like all of acoustics as vibe check now. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, for whatever reason, this tea dance is pretty popular. There's 600 t- uh, 1,600 people who attend the tea dance on this particular Jesus, night. nothing to do in Kansas City. Have you been to Missouri? No, there's not. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love to go to Kansas City and just, like, merge across 27 lanes of, like, a mile-long freeway into a parking lot, retrieve my Motorola StarTac from my belt <laughs> holster, and just want to fucking kill myself. <laughs> there's, uh, there's the World War One Museum there, which is pretty interesting. Wow. And yeah, that's uh, all I've got. Mm-hmm. I've been to the airport. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Was there a tea dance? No. Uh, well, missing out on the like uh, integral culture, I guess. That's why you lived. Is this truly some <laughs> cultural <laughs> elitism going on here, people? Um, Final destination: the tea dance just like pursues <laughs> you. I, I lived in York, Pennsylvania. I am entitled to call other places bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I say to people like you're a coastal elite. It's like I'm from like Moore County, mm. North Carolina. Well, I, I I have to do some. I have to get some shots in here at America to make up for the pacer stuff on the last episode, because I got a bunch of annoyed uh, Northern English people being like, "No, we love these horrible, rusty, shitty trains." So I have to like reassert myself. There were a lot of pacer defenders I in the know, comments. It, I was it, surprised. It's Stockholm Syndrome, honestly. <laughs> Usually I'm the one to defend, like, late modern architecture, being like, actually, it was great. The whole thing was, like, awesome. It was the best period of architecture ever. But, like, I feel like there's no uh, defending the Hyatt Regency after mm. the collapse. It's like, Don't you mean rolling Stockholm Syndrome, Alice? Oh, fuck off. Oh. God! Oh. <laughs> 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 Thank you. I Thank like you. it. <laughs> yeah, just... <laughs> okay, moving on to the tea dance. Yeah, so the tea dance. Uh, there's there's 1,600 people in the lobby. There's 40 people on the second floor walkway and 16 to 20 on the fourth floor walkway. You know that's bad when there's a range. Yes. That's, uh, that's some, somebody going through and counting spoonfuls of person and being like, well... There was also a... By volume. A 35th high school reunion there the same night. 
you just know that because high school reunions are that fraught, somebody was wishing for something like that to happen <laughs> and oh my thought God. they had, like, carry magical powers. <laughs> you know, you're having a conversation with someone much more successful than you, and you say something, like, like you just lie, you don't even know why you do it, but you say, yeah, I actually invented the post-it. And you just think to yourself, yeah, God, can something happen to, like, take all of the heat off of me in this thing? And then the next thing you know... The Hyatt Re Regency walkway collapse then saves you from yeah. social Then that guy's never going to ask you about your uh, what you've been up to the past 35 no, years exactly. again. exactly. So. It's, it's like, it's like yeah, yeah. If I, ever, I don't Small know if I'd ever to go pay. to my high school reunion... But they're like, yeah, so what do you do? And it's like, uh, I'm like the same like loser, but I have lots of followers on Twitter now. Mm. It's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's like the I moments... still don't like leave my house. And yeah, uh... the, 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 the thing collapses the moment after I mentioned Twitter by accident and somebody asks me, oh, hey, what's your Twitter? Oh, yes. Thank you. Yeah, people are like, oh, I love your tweets, and I'm like, in the middle of saying, oh, I'm sorry, and then this happens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, everyone's uh, complaining uh, about, or e everyone's trying to impress each other, because apparently, you know, this is a uh, high school reunion. I didn't know this was part of it, so I'm now improvising. Well, they, they, they were all doing, like, Reagan stuff, or 81 is Reagan, right? Yeah. Like, uh, yes. Yeah. So, so they're all doing, like, supply-side economics to each other, and, like, comparing business cards. Everyone's in marketing. Things of that nature. Everyone's in marketing. Everyone has those, uh, like, um, uh, shirts with the collar that's a different color from the, like, um, uh, the actual shirt. Yeah, it's atrocious. Suddenly... The fourth floor walkway drops several inches. Hmm. Sounds bad. Yeah, not supposed to do that. And then that fucker falls all the way down. Hmm. Pancakes onto the second floor walkway, which also falls on the ground. And that immediately murders 114 people and injures 216 more. Yikes. Uh, I would like to counter that. 111 people died that night, uh, and then three more people died weeks and months later. That's how we got to 114. So there are three people who who who, who stood on oh, and then died. Cherry, yeah. Ah, uh, okay, okay. The rescue operation takes 14 hours, right? They have to like bring cranes in through the windows and stuff, and they gotta yeah. they gotta bring in people with jackhammers. Well, I, I actually know a little bit about the the medical side of this, and they were doing like amputations uh, with, with chainsaws. People. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's not. It's not great, folks. We don't. We don't like to see it. It's very, very bad. The sprinkler system ruptured. Oh, and then mm. so people almost drowned who are like trapped. Yeah. This keeps happening. Uh, why do we even have sprinklers? Dude, because like, of fire. In case Come there's on. a fire. No, we. You should have one. Th if we're gonna have building collapses, no sprinklers. Or if we're gonna have sprinklers, no building collapses. But you can't do both because this is twice now I've had to confront the idea of somebody being trapped in rubble, drowning in the fire suppression system, and I, I don't like doing it. So just pick one. It seems to be a fairly common thing now mm -hmm. that you wouldn't think about. So this is the largest death toll from. A United States building collapse until 9 11. I mean, at least it inspired fewer terrible movies. I don't think I've seen any movies about this, yeah. Dude, I would absolutely watch like a four hour documentary about this. Like, yeah, but, but, in, like, but like granular detail. Yeah, and, like, but for it wouldn't some reason, be a like, documentary. You would get like Nicolas Cage as, I don't know, like a building inspector or like a fire chief or something, and it would be terrible. Extremely loud and incredibly crushed. <laughs> 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 Dude. Yeah, people don't actually talk about this, but the revolving restaurant was a franchise of Windows on the World. <laughs> oh, good lord. So... Anyways. This is one of those pairs of C-channels, right? Uh, well, that's how it's supposed to look, right? Yeah, the, we, yeah it's, we, not, it's not supposed to look like that. Absolutely uh, the, destroyed. The, 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 the guilty mood. This is the mood. This is the mood, yes. Here's, here's where the nut with 2P on it sheared straight through the C-channels. Uh, so the fourth floor failed first because of the excess of load and then pancaked onto the second level, which, you know, obviously also failed. Um, and, you know, this is pretty quickly dis dis discovered in the investigation to have been the major cause. Now, as a result of this, Jack D. Gillum and Associates were acquitted of all criminal liability. Awesome. Uh, Yes. The guy who accepted the plan over the phone was stripped of his professional engineering license. 
<laughs> they literally, uh, they took his stamp away. Yeah, they took his stamp away. They cancelled. I mean, it, it would have been worse if it was in New Jersey, because then they would have had to have taken his crimper away. Uh, yes. Absolutely cancelled. And the company lost his license to practice in Missouri, Kansas, and Texas. So did you just move? Probably. Just doing just doing the monorail bit from The Simpsons, but selling skywalks in, I don't know, like downstate <laughs> Illinois or something. I like that, uh... The initial drawings uh, by Gillum uh, were only preliminary, but Haven Steele took them and ran with them as finalized drawings, and just like nobody checked, mm. <laughs> just de- up and down that whole like six stage uh, process we went through. Nobody was like, "Yeah, did we actually do math on this?" Or anything? oops, nobody get no. you know not to be too spooky here, but like you know, imagine just like the sheer bureaucracy of like. A, for example, like, uh, like a hundred-story skyscraper. Mm-hmm. Like when when you said not to not to be spooky, I was thinking we were gonna go back to like Mothman or cryptids. Do they no, have no, no. cryptids in Kansas City? I mean, bureaucracy is the real cryptid. Mm, that's true. I mean, it's what killed the Soviet Union. Yes. Hot take. Sorry. Uh, I mean, we can't rule out Mothman involvement there, but <laughs> Ronald Reagan was the cryptid here. Oh. <laughs> Truly a cryptid. Don't, don't, don't like put Ronald Reagan in the same, uh, in the same camp as like Bigfoot, who is an icon of queer culture. Just Ronald Reagan seen on like a a Super Eight skulking towards the nuts to like loosen them. Oh my god! <laughs> Can we blame this? Can we blame this on neoliberalism? It's some like. I, I think this is bureaucracy, like, gone wrong. Oh, no, I can, I can argue with that. Because, so, on October 14th, 1979, oh this is a year before the walkways collapsed, while the hotel is still under construction, 2,700 square feet of the atrium roof collapsed because one of the roof connections at the north end of the atrium failed. In testimony, uh, the engineering design team stated that on three separate occasions, they requested on-site project representation during the construction phase. However, these requests are not acted on by the owner uh, due to additional costs of providing on-site inspection. And it's worth noting that that owner was a subsidiary of Hallmark. Hmm. I kid you not. <laughs> I'd love to get a, a, like a like, crush to death sorry, with a hundred other people so, with like so, the sorry little... About your... Sorry about yeah. your death, Fram. But they must do. They, they, they make money card. coming and going on that cars. They get oh all my the God! cards. Sorry for your loss that I yeah, caused. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's my fault. Yes. That's. Mm-hmm. I mean, you have to th- think about it this way: like the '80s were really this time historically of like insane corporate mergers that like didn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're like Hallmark just owns a stadium now. Yeah. Exactly. Like. I mean, this was just so common. And then what's funny is, like, by the 2000s, like, all of these things just kind of, like, broke back apart again. Uh, every, there was just, like, a mergers and acquisitions, like, fever. Uh, and I think, like, yeah, I mean, I, so, yeah, negligence plays, plays definitely plays a part. And I feel like negligence is truly, uh, like, the contributing factor to, like, 90% of engineering disasters. Uh and someone somewhere is like being ne- negligent, but it's like, it just makes you wonder, like, you know, a lot of buildings are constructed and a lot of them are rather complex buildings. Uh, and somehow, you know, they all manage to stay together for the most part, leaks aside. But then mm-hmm. it only takes like one tiny mistake to just like cause a massive tragedy. Yeah, um, well, it's, it's, the, it's the Swiss cheese thing, right? Like you have to have... You can be negligent. There's probably a million of these things where there's just absolute equivalent negligence and it just gets caught by the safety factor or just luck or whatever. Uh, But sometimes all of these things just line up. Yeah. It's like the Boeing thing. Like, just basically, like, everyone involved, like, screwed up. Mm -hmm. Uh, Or, like, was covering it up or something. In this case, it feels like more, a little bit more like a little more like an accident where it's just like, oh, we just, like, didn't look over the plans or something. Rather than, like, a coordinated, like, effort to just, like, you know, assert regulation or something. Uh, There's, like, I feel like there's, like, a little bit of, like, bad luck involved in this one. Uh, Mm -hmm. Negligence and bad luck are a very powerful combination. So... In the end, uh, the Crown Center Corporation, subsidiary of the Hallmark Corporation, paid out $140 million to victims. 
That's very little, considering. Yeah, Cause well, you know, it was, it was the 80s, a uh, dollar was worth more. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. 334 million as of last year. Mm. A candy bar cost a nickel back then and was bigger. <laughs> Dude, back in my day. So that's what, like three million-ish per person? I mean, it, I, don't get me wrong, I'm not, I wouldn't turn down three million dollars, but like, I mean, you'd be time, dead. You can count a million on one hand, Alice. <laughs> yeah, at the same time, at the, at the same time, I would also prefer not to be crushed by a skywalk, right? Yes. That would be my preference, indeed. So Jack Gillum himself, you know, who is in charge of Jack Gillum and Associates, and who, you know, engineer a record on the project, you know, he hit the conference circuit and uh, <laughs> yeah. started talking about, you know, how this could have been this horrible it. tragedy could have been prevented, and what we did wrong, so on and so forth. So, you know, he he came out pretty good. Mm. Um, this, this is like a thing, like, these guys just go on to teach, like, engineering ethics courses. Like, didn't that happen to the guy who did, like, the City Corp building? That sounds about right. I mean, engineering ethics is a joke. This might be why. We, we, can, we, can, we can model this, and we can say that, in this case, a Skywalk is a machine designed to turn 114 people into a TED Talk. Efficiency. <laughs> That's neoliberalism. You just, to, to turn that many people into a TED Talk, you have to compress them quite finely. Um, this but is it's getting re a little it's too really low. good at that. God, God's plan for some of us is to be pod fodder for a TED Talk. I already gave a TED Talk and I just like do not recommend it. Uh, they basically just like drill you on how to be more corporate and like you're not allowed any spontaneity whatsoever. And it's like extremely hard to have like ADHD and give a TED Talk. It's like. It goes against, like, your very nature, which is just, like, wandering speech, going nowhere for hours. But that's suited perfectly to podcasting, so... Absolutely. You know. One one of these days, I'm just going to pivot to the cat, to podcasting. TED Talks. Ableist. Cancelled. Yes. Barely do any pronoun checks, let alone every minute, like we do. Um... Suck my ass, gamers. Yes. <laughs> 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 that's right. Uh... The building was still good, so they repaired the lobby, and the hotel operates today as the Sheridan Kansas City Hotel at Crown Center. Hmm. Here, here's what it looks I like. I hate hotels being at things, by the way. I don't know why. That is a sick uh, yeah. art thing. I, I can't articulate why exactly. I just, no. Lots of strings. I don't like it. No. no. This is like when, when places call themselves, like, the lofts at... Oh, I'm just fuck like, no, off. fuck yes. you. Just come up with a new name. Uh -huh. they're and they're like not lofts. They're not lofts. They're like it's never not, lofts. It's not a loft, it's new construction. They're never lofts. Like they're never in like the loft form. They're always oh. just like like the shittiest It's just a ground floor loft. Yeah. There's there's no lofts. Dude, lofts are so like actual lofts are sick. Like they're not very like efficient, but they're actually sick and we should like do them more because I think lofts are sick. But everyone just call appropriates the name loft. <laughs> just a loft being like this is my culture not a costume like and no and taylor loft is like not even a loft <laughs> i hate it it's, they're not lofts. it's only a loft if it comes from the like reclaimed industrial warehouse at region of france otherwise <laughs> it's just a sparkling apartment no it's a loft is like i, I think technically like a loft is is like a a, a, a two-story apartment that is enclosed in a single volume Hmm. Uh, so that you have like either like a platform or like a, like a sort of balcony feature that you like that serves as like a like a second room like a like a little room of its own or something. Uh, I think that that's technically the the law what a loft is. Uh, but also like yeah the the post industrial thing like those are usually also lofts because like they have huge internal volumes and there's like space for like sort of like vertical constructions inside of them. Or just, like, having really tall ceilings. These, like, the lofts at Riverbrook or whatever, like, you know, off the highway, like, you know, uh, off of, like, the Jersey Turnpike or whatever, like, five miles from Manhattan, are just, like, terrible. Like, the ceilings are, like, eight feet tall. Uh, like, everything is, like, made of particle board. <laughs> it's a reverse Frank Lloyd Wright. Everything yeah, is, like, very shoddy, but extremely tall, instead of very solid and, like, very low down. I appreciate Frank Lloyd Wright as a short person. Mmm, short king. Yeah, that's right. We should also uh, not forget that, uh, the, the, because 65 tons of walkways and humans had collapsed, 
uh, they had to use cranes to move them, like breaking essentially into the hotel in order to move the uh, the big ass collapsed walkways. And uh, don't forget that rescuers had to dismember bodies to get to victims who might still be alive. Mm. So yeah, this is pretty much a masterclass on how to not fucking build a building. Yeah, yeah. How, how to traumatize a bunch of firefighters. Um, yeah, great. The high school was bad enough and now they're just re-traumatized. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's just the, the firefighter Dalmatians are just like uh, therapy dogs. I just refuse to go on any walkway inside a building now. Like, after reading about this, I think I first read about it when I was in college or something. Because, like, list of, like, engineering or structural engineering disasters is, like, my favorite Wikipedia page. Mm. I, like, have this bad habit of, like, reading about, like, lots of death. (laughs) (laughs) Like, things that, like, killed a lot of people, I'm like, that's sick. I want to read about that. Not to, not to... Not to spoil a future episode, but I'm that for uh, roll on, roll off ferries. Never get a ferry. Oh yes. Never yes. ever get on a ferry ever. I don't drive, so like, there's no point for me to get on a ferry. What if you have to cross like Champlain, Kate? Huh? Did Whatever. You that? No, I'll you swim. didn't get eaten by Champy. Just, just go around the water. Nope. Nope. Had to take a ferry. Those are the rules. How do you get to Newfoundland then? I, uh, I don't fly. Like, yeah, an I, 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 I do not go to Newfoundland then. Dude, that sucks. I want to go. Should go. I, it's I, very I, lovely. Yeah, I, the boat I, is very I, nice. I want to go. I want to meet the adorable dogs that like swimming and stuff. But on the other hand, I also don't want to drown in like freezing water, banging on a porthole of a ferry. So, like, I I would like to point out that when uh, Do Not Eat and I did take the ferry uh, back from Newfoundland to Nova Scotia, it was a sixteen-hour boat ride, oh and God, our die? cabin had no windows. None at all. So, like, our strategy in its entirety was to get super drunk so that if we went down in the middle of the night, at least it wouldn't bother us so much. Yeah, and that way you have a chance It was a genuine ex-Estonian ferry as well. Christ. That, that is... MV Super Fast 9. Yeah, you could that is a good strategy, because you might the have the Canada. miraculous drunken survival thing, where you just, like, float <laughs> free of the wreckage somehow, and you're just like, well, I feel, I feel fine. That was my that was my logic. Hmm. There was no lifeboat drill. Nope, there was not. No, the Canadian, no, I had to memorize Canadians how to get the either. lifeboats. Anyway, so uh, lessons from this engineering disaster. Uh, Do the fucking math. Yeah, uh, ma- math. Review goods. shit, not just on the phone. Yeah, yeah I think ma- math goods should be uh, a given. Phone bad. Email goods sometimes. Uh, Skywalks bad. Affront to uh, God. Affront to God bad. Probably couldn't email back then. They probably have to fax. They like don't do Skywalks that much anymore. I don't think. Like, when is yeah. the last time anyone has seen a building with like, uh, like a huge like atrium volume with a Skywalk? Like, when was the last time a building like that was built? I feel like this traumatized like everybody. Yeah. Uh, they 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 don't like really even do like huge atriums anymore because. It's and thank just... God. I mean, just look at that. Look at the slide. Because John Portman died. <laughs> yeah, that's true. John Portman did die. Yeah. Uh, John Portman, not an architect, according to Rem Coolhouse. Okay, whatever. Rem Coolhouse, <laughs> not a theorist, according to he, Kate he, Wagner. He, he, he thinks he's, he thinks he's <laughs> hot shit just because his name is Coolhouse. I, I mean, mean, yeah, I mean, that is pretty sick. Let's be real here. Like, if I, my last name was Coolhouse, I would absolutely become an architect. I'm I'm gonna change my I'm gonna change my name to call a house. Dude, Rem yeah. Rem okay, but like my feelings on Rem is that like Rem is always just like on a seesaw of like good and bad. Like there's good Rem and then he like then there's like it's inevitable that he's gonna fall back to earth and become bad Rem. And then mm-hmm. just as soon he's gonna spring back up and become good Rem. This is like he, the entire he is, trajectory he is Harvey of his Dent. career. He he flips the like uh very uh very aesthetic coin and whichever one it lands on that's his person. He just decided to get into country time. houses now and I'm like, Rem, calm down. <laughs> REM cool house. Dude. <laughs> that's a Twitter handle. I mean, I think overall, like, I like Rem more than his contemporaries. Like he's definitely better like he than you know, like Zaha, for example. Uh, in terms of, like, written output. Well, I mean, now. Yeah. Well, he was always better. As a theorist, uh, he... I mean, I think he said some his said some necessary things. Uh, things maybe we didn't want to hear. But, like, mm. I mean, he, like, will never live up to, like, his work from, like, before the 21st century. Like, 
SMLXL was like the last thing that like he did that I thought was like really interesting. Junk space was good because it like reinforces that I hate airports. Uh, <laughs> like that made me feel vindicated. It's like, yeah, the airport actually sucks. But it's funny, like, mm. I, you know, after I got into like, you know, reading about aviation, now I kind of like the airport because you get to watch the planes and stuff. And it's like, oh, that's this kind of plane. That's like so cool. Yeah. Uh, but the actual building is just. No, they're it, all terrible. Yeah, box. Yeah. Dude, airports are just like climate change machines. Just like I, I like everything about airplanes except the actual experience of Me too. flying. I agree. Mm. <laughs> Hard same. I hate flying. Yeah. I was on a, a CRJ two hundred from Philly to Montreal, and I've been on some miserable flights, but like four four mile traveled, like that was far and away the most miserable fucking flight I've ever mm. been on. Uh, local, like, British Airways to Scotland occasionally still does a turboprop, and that's... Done it! Done yeah, it! Yep, fun time. <laughs> no way, I would never. I flew from... Dude, I've seen enough episodes of Air Disasters to, like, not yeah. turboprop it's, it. T- turboprops are fun, if by fun you mean it's like a regular plane, but the whole time... Like, for an hour. It's great. I was I was on the, uh, the Celtic FC... Uh, Celtic SC, whichever express yeah, yeah. from Dublin to Glasgow, uh, which is like forty-five minutes in the air. The two uh, fans sitting in front of us uh, asked me and my dad if we would buy their beers, and we <laughs> did. And then they gave us money for their beers because you were only allowed to order two beers on this half an hour flight. <laughs> and, uh, That's yeah, my people. So, uh, yeah. Uh... <laughs> Uh, come on, you boys in green. <laughs> Dude, that's me, because I like am like a periodic flight mm. drinker. Like the second the, the stewardess like comes out, I'm like, yo, come here. I need like three gin and tonics. Mm. And the best part is like on Lufthansa, like on like over over the sea flights, like they're free. And then like it's either I want three gin and tonics or I'm like taking like three like unisoms and i'm like just gonna like pass out i try and get about 17 bears in before i get on the plane and have 34 more on the plane and i still can't sleep yeah i i took a flight from uh from tel aviv to jfk uh i went on birthright because i'm a horrible human being sorry <laughs> you guys canceled me in the comments or whatever but uh yeah it was 14 hours in a fucking aisle seat because my compatriot had abandoned me so the stewardess is coming over, like, to her credit, very consistently, and I'm just, like, wine drunk, like, somewhere over the Atlantic, like, absolutely the most miserable version of myself, and I'm still just like, I hope this fucking plane goes down, and it's just <laughs> over. <laughs> I mean, that's that's you being uncancelled, that's your penance for doing Birthright, is that you have to get the, was it El Al, or do you fly American? Uh, I flew El Al. Well, well uh, again, doubly miserable. Yep. Uh did you know that El Al is Spanish and Arabic for the, the? <laughs> Thank you, Roz. Uh, yeah, it was so funny, too, because, like, uh, not to not to insult my Jewish heritage, but, like, what kind of 14-hour flight cheaps out on, like, the multimedia screens? <laughs> well, I was just like, you know what? Stereotypes <laughs> exist for a reason. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa! Hey! Okay, okay. A.K. Ah, shit, we're, <laughs> we're getting cancelled. Fuck. God damn it, okay. you know, I... Everyone's like... Dude, like, I've had, like, 13 people, like, ask me about, like, YouTubers that are, like, in conflict or whatever, and I'm like, yo, like, no offense to, to Justin, but, like, I just don't watch YouTube. Like, my mm-hmm. YouTube... My YouTube history is, like, it's just, like, 14 hours of music, or, like, Kmart <laughs> commercial 1994. Yeah, I, I, or, I, I ended up watching... Uh, like an hour's worth of trucks crashing into that low bridge. Oh, oh dude, I know. That's a good time. <laughs> dude, this okay. So I'm from North Carolina, and this is like a legend in like all of North. The, the dude, the bridge, dude, eleven foot eight dot com, dude. They're moving it. They're ruining it. A legend, it. a legend in North Carolina, just like forever. Like you like grow up with the con- someone shows you like eleven foot eight dot net or eleven foot eight dot com or whatever it is, uh, and like when you're like in middle school, and like someone else will show it to you again. Like it all, it, like people can't, like talk about it at parties. Like people are like, yo, have you seen that bridge that like everyone gets trapped under like a bunch of idiots and everyone's, and it's like extremely, <laughs> it's just like extremely <laughs> funny to watch. It's like, I mean, granted, like I went to like music school and like everyone was like weird and like would be into like watching like trucks crash into a bridge. Yeah, but it even, but it's, like, even never like, not funny. I, I, I say this like 
anybody who's hearing this isn't but like an hour into watching a YouTube channel about like uh, engineering, so they're already nerds. But it is more satisfying than it sounds, even. Uh, there's something really quite zen about watching this bridge just fucking peel the top off of a truck. It's great. It's <laughs> and they have all the flashing lights and shit, and you're just yeah. like, this yeah, is yeah. punishment for man's arrogance. <laughs> I know. Do so, you know, if, like, if there is a god, not saying that there is or isn't, but like, you know, he definitely created the bridge just to be like, lol. Uh, it's uh, as, as revenge for the skywalks. <laughs> yeah. You yes. thought, now it will bring you back down to earth again. That's not lol, though. That is not lol. I want to, I want to, I want to say that the Skywalks are not lol. No. But they're, they're, they the, are this, the bridge F's hurts the no chat. one except yeah. for people who are dumb enough to drive under it. And that's lol. Hmm. Yes. So, sky, Skywalks, bad. Bridge, good. Uh, Flying, bad. Flying bad, fairy's bad, very bad. Fairy's good, depending on the day. Mm, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm going with fairy good, yeah. Uh, you're both wrong. Pace is bad. Uh, car bad, train good, pace are notwithstanding. Uh, yeah. Do the math. Do the math. Do, do, add, add, add up the numbers. Do, do the steps. If you're going yeah. to build a building, please do the math on that building. Mm -hmm. Make sure it's not, uh, not 60%, not 30%. But hundred percent up to code, please. Yeah, uh, don't don't yes. put the plastic maybe, siding. Maybe one hundred and ten percent. Redundancy. Don't, yeah. don't don't put the plastic siding from Lowe's up and then immediately grill <laughs> against it. <and> ah! it. <laughs> yeah, classic. Dude, vinyl siding is truly like it'll just warp just from being in the sun. Mm. Like my parents, I've like had to replace some on their house just because like it's this part of of the house that faces the sun. And, like, over the years, it just, like, kind of warped. I mean, granted, it took 20 years, but also, like... Mm. Much like the Joker, it gets twisted after a while. Oh, my God. <laughs> Dude, I still haven't seen the Joker. You don't need to. I've heard, like, mixed things. I've heard it that it's either. good. I've heard that it's bad. I've heard that it's smart. I've heard that it's dumb. It's like, you know, I truly, like, don't know what to believe now, so I think I just have to go see it for myself. Don't mm. worry, I'll wear a bulletproof vest. <laughs> All right, we're we're about an hour into a thing I thought was going to be about thirty minutes. So I'm, I'm going to try and wrap up here. Too many yeah. jokes. You, you yeah, well. accidentally have thirty percent of the code length of a YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, anyway, uh, do the math. Uh, next week, of course, we're going to cover the Tacoma Narrows bridge yes. collapse. Finally. That's going to be a great episode. Thank goodness, I, I can't, can't wait. wait. It's going to be fantastic. Yeah. Um. And I guess uh, that's the end of the episode. Anyone got anything to pitch before you go? Uh, listen to Trash Future, uh, available wherever podcasts are sold. That's it. That, that was my pitch. Read McMansionHell.com. Thank you. Uh, yeah, follow me on Twitter for weird retweets of gross national security people and then get real mad. Oh, and DM me uh, if you're a turf. And you want to get uh, you want to get real mad in my DMs, and then get <laughs> yeah, mad I again when that. I put it out. That was great. Yeah, so I just oh, want... that did happen. Yeah, yeah. I, I uh, apparently because I said that crimes against turfs aren't crimes. I'm a violent <laughs> male, and I guess I've just beaten every uh, female identifying person I've ever met. So sorry about that, folks. Mm. That's that, unfortunate. That's okay because turfs aren't people. That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just do another pronoun check and just fade the audio down as we do that. He, him. Oh, yes. Liam Anderson. He, uh, him. Suck it, nerds. <laughs> uh, Justin Rosniak. He, him. Uh, Alice Caldwell Kelly. She, her. Kate Wagner. She, her. I'm sorry for everything I've ever said. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it, bud. <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> put it back, put it back. I don't like it. <laughs>